I am a little smooth brain. How do I fire my gun? So yeah, Yegor, the man, the myth, the legend, and also the dude who can't put a red dot side on his AN-94 or his Bison but can pilot a super mech. So yeah, we're making a video about Yegor. I don't think anyone saw this dude coming. He's uh, certainly a man, not a robot. So his weapon, we're going to be focusing on the Bison one because he has an AN-94, but it's super stock. So that's another way of saying it's an A94 without attachments, and I think that's kind of lame to make a video on. I mean, some guy commented on making a Car 98 video uh, from Ghost Frontline, but she's literally the Car 98 with zero attachments. And honestly, that's just like a base weapon review, and it would re remove a, good, a decent amount of the video where I talk about the attachments. But anyway, uh, back to Mr. Yegor using the PP-19 Bison. So I don't know whether or not this thing has a fast time to kill, but it's not like terrible. It's not shoot. It's not the K7 from Call of Duty Ghost taking eight shots to kill, but there are some advantages to this gun. So number one, it has pretty good mobility. It's not the fastest in the class, but it's good for mobility when you consider the fact that there's a 64 round magazine on the bottom of it. So that's pretty much the main uh, defining feature of the Bison. It does not have a rear grip, no not sorry, rear grip, it does not have an under barrel slot because the under barrel is taken up by a giant hel helical, helical magazine that holds 64 rounds and uh, that's by default by the way. So this weapon still aims down sights fast and moves fast with a 64 round magazine so its upside is capacity without needing to use an attachment slot on it and it still remains pretty mobile. The uh, downside to this is in terms of damage per bullet, it's lower than you would like, probably lower than some of the other SMGs, and also its rate of fire is subpar, so it has a slower time to kill compared to the other SMGs, with the main advantage being that you can literally lay down fire upon them for like a good 8 to 9 seconds straight, allowing your teammates to rush by you. Uh, if this was Battlefield, that would be true, but it's Call of Duty, and I've run into my fair share of people who run into a volley of fire and quickscope me. Um, that makes me bitter, but well, we're not here to talk about how bitter I am over the fact that other people's strategies are so dumb they beat mine. Just looking at the iron sights of the gun, because Yegor can't afford a red dot for whatever reason, the iron sights are actually pretty nice. They remind me of the uh, AK iron sights, as in they're, they're clean. They, the, of course, in the middle of the screen, you have the body of the gun. The iron sights are not detached from the main body. Like when you use the Kilo 141, you have like these little pillars that stand up from the rail, which gives you a lot of good peripheral vision. Uh, not this way with the Bison, they're pretty down low to the receiver. So you're going to see the gun when you aim down sights. Now, this gun has a low fire rate, like I mentioned before, which helps with the recoil control. Um, luckily for anyone who uses this gun, this gun has pretty good recoil control, but it shakes a lot when shooting, meaning it doesn't have very good recoil stability. Uh, normally, I would never use a gun without throwing a muzzle brake on it, but because I had to use this gun without any recoil attachments, no barrel attachments, no muzzle attachments, I sort of learned how to control the recoil, so you can see earlier on in that uh, Yegor montage that I'm, I'm whooping their ass, and honestly I'm pretty proud of that gameplay, although I never really went on a kill streak, I just felt really nice at the game. So let's talk about 
the attachments. So we have the 84 round heli heli helical magazine. So that's kind of overkill. Now you're getting to LMG territory and even higher than some LMGs in the case of the MG34. So 64 rounds is already a lot for killing other players and 84 is just even more absurd. So why would you ever choose 84 rounds? Now the Bison has access to full metal jacket, the perk that allows you to do a ton of damage to kill streaks. So if you equip the 84 round uh, helical magazine and equip full metal jacket, you can probably take down a VTOL just a little bit slower than the LMG, but also you're not as slow with the LMG. You know, people might have their sentry turrets, uh, they could have some shield turrets, or maybe there's a Wilson. Or a you know, chopper gunner, you could just light them up with the 84 rounds and full metal jacket. You'll be doing a lot of DPS against vehicles that way. Plus, you also won't need to reload as much because, you know, it's 84 fucking rounds. And the downside is really minor. It's like some ADS, like what, 4 milliseconds aimed down side speed? There's pretty much not a reason to use the attack. There's not a reason to not use the attachment. But on the other end of the argument, there's not really a reason to use the attachment because the base bison already has 64 rounds which is really adequate for killing other humans and it's also adequate for taking down kill streaks. So the 84 rounder is it's not a bad attachment but is there really a reason you should be using it because it does take up an attachment slot that's the only negative of this attachment. So a general consensus uh, it's fun if you're fighting a lot of kill streaks. I wouldn't recommend it just because it's kind of overkill. It's really overkill. So next up is the rear grip attachment, the rubberized grip tape. Now I like the rubberized grip tape. Um, that's a lie. It's actually very useless. So the rubberized grip tape reduces vertical recoil or recoil control by about 4%. Um, to put this in perspective, the compensator reduces it by 27%. Um, now I don't need to, you don't need to be a genius to realize that it's very one-sided. There's pretty much never a reason you should use a rubberized grip tape when you have the option of using a foregrip or a compensator because they have like five times the effect. And that's actually true based on what I've seen and felt when using the rubberized grip tape. But the reason why it's on the gun is because remember when I mentioned that this gun has good recoil control but mediocre recoil stability? The only way you can increase recoil stability is by putting on an angled foregrip or putting on a muzzle brake. Now there's only one of those attachments available on the Bison. It's only the muzzle brake. So you're going to have to use the muzzle brake if you want to make the gun more stable because I don't think you really need recoil control. Um, unfortunately, Yegor does not have a muzzle brake on his gun. It's actually stock, and it's not even an extended barrel, so I didn't have an excuse to use the 8.7 steel barrel. I just had to use the stock barrel. So, in terms of recoil control, it's pretty much never a bad thing to try to go for recoil control. Um, this one doesn't even reduce your aim down sight speed. It actually just makes your aiming sway a little more, I think. And even when it does do that, it's very little. I mean, it's an SMG using iron sights. What, do you, what type of god do you have to be to shoot someone 300 meters away using a gun like this? So, rubberized grip tape isn't a bad attachment, but you, you, could, you could do much better. You could just throw on a muzzle brake or a compensator, but within the limits of copying Yegor's weapon, I cannot do that. So let me pull up the image of his gun again. Okay, so the next attachment is actually the one milliwatt, one milliwatt laser. So this one's kind of funny. He doesn't look like he has a one milliwatt laser on his gun. So originally I didn't put it on there. But also, if I were to look at his gun and compare the rails on the side, it also doesn't look like a rail. You don't really see the Picatinny hard lines and everything. It just sort of looks smooth. It looks like there's something there, but it's like smoothened out on the edges. And it resembles the laser more than resembles the Picatinny rail. So I just decided to slap on the laser because it could be the laser, it could be not. You know, Schrodinger's Bison could have this, could have that. I don't know, it depends on whoever's looking at it. So because I wanted this gun to be less plain, I threw on the um, one milliwatt laser attachment. Now I think all of you should know that there are no downsides to using one milliwatt laser. 
uh, outside of using an attachment saw. It just decreases your hip fire spread. And if I remember, the bison actually doesn't have that great of a hip fire spread. So helping it out allows you to fight better in close quarters, especially given the fact that this gun doesn't have a high fire rate, which already makes it less ideal for close quarters environments. The final attachment is would be the frangible wounding ammunition. I could have gone for a sleight of hand like I normally do, but considering I'm running an 84 round magazine, it's it's once again overkill. How many shots do I need to land? How many times do I need to reload the gun to begin with? I don't really need to impulse reload when you have 84 rounds on your gun. So I didn't bother with sleight of hand, I just made the gun wounding. So for those of you who don't know, wounding is what happens when you shoot someone with a gun. And in Call of Duty, uh, theoretically, say it takes 5 seconds to start regenerating from a gunshot wound. Wounding doubles that time, so instead of taking 5 seconds to start healing, it will take 10 seconds. Unfortunately, it has no effect on the uh, stim shot, but I mean, then again, it would be a really good counter, and I'm fairly sure they don't want to checks and balances thing like Juggernaut and stopping power from the original Call of Duties. And by original, I mean like COD 4. So, what do, what do I think of this overall? It's it's okay. It's nice. The it's actually fairly fun to run. Uh, what I would do is I would slap. I would get rid of that rubberized grip tape. I would put on a muzzle brake, and I would put on an optic, and that's it. Uh, you can run the 84 round. It's really your choice. Uh, you could remove it. You could remove it and equip one of those really large barrels, like the one with recoil control. If you equip the one with recoil control, you don't really need the muzzle brake because I do think it actually decreases the shake a little bit. So that's just that's just how it is. I think the gun's nice. Yegor, Yegor had some taste when choosing an, uh, an SMG without many attachments. I think, you know, I mean, he's very limited. It's a Russian gun. He had to use a Russian SMG. But yeah, you know, Yegor did a good job. I mean, if you like the video, stick around to see my outro. Uh, I actually worked on it. I, I think it looks cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching.